Hello world and welcome to Kerbal Space Program campaign mode. Our self-imposed campaign mode rules. I will get to them in a moment, but first let's just take a look at what we've got. Ah, look at this. A lovely clean new world. Clean new save. Rip astronauts are in training they're being prepared for the missions to come the task before them with the final goal being a landing on Minmus at an altitude of 47 million meters away that's a long way through the vast coldness of space will they have enough oxygen will I not crash them horribly we shall see. Welcome to episode zero. This will be the introduction, uh, just explaining, going over a few things. First off, the rules. The rules, basically, they're they're very very um, they're very rudimentary. Everything. Uh, various achievements have a certain value placed on them. Uh, we are using the currency Kenny's. So this here structural fuselage, fuselage costs 550 Kenny's. Just because it's, you know, it's easy to say. Now, the way this works is you basically have two sets of rewards you have your achievements which only happen once and then you have your mission rewards achievements are stuff are such things as 30 kilometer suborbital flight 60 kilometer suborbital flight 80 kilometer suborbital flight 100 kilometer suborbital flight orbital flight and finally a landing but the landing only counts on other bodies. It doesn't count on Kerbin. You should be able to land on Kerbin as it is. Uh, I'm going to post a link in the description to a forum post with all the rules and whatnot and all the various stats and stuff. Probably laid out a thousand times better than I can actually explain it. Um mission rewards I've tried to cover every kind of mission I can think of with a basic set reward so an unmanned satellite is 10,000 kennies uh, whereas a geosynchronous satellite is 15,000 uh, so on so forth with various things going up now rules do apply to these and that's the if the achievements such as the 30 km, 60 km, 80 km, 100 km up to orbit, they do not stack. So you you cannot reach 80 km, get that bonus plus the 60 and 30. It's inclusive already. Any any mission reward that is done unmanned is halved apart from the satellite which is considered already unmanned. So say a manned probe sort of you know like a manned sort of mission to the moon or something is thirty thousand, a unmanned would be fifteen thousand, etc. Now what else have we got here? Ah yes. Moon missions themselves they are themselves going to have the landing achievement bonus with them if they are successful so there is a total of about 60,000 kennies available for a very successful moon mission um, which is a lot of course there's lots of things that can go wrong now to stop any kind of uh, runaway success of continuing to do a, sa a same type of mission and receiving lots and lots and lots of money every time you do it 
the reward is halved by 50%. So if you got 60,000 for going to the moon the first time, the next time you get 30,000. A little harsh, but that's how we do it. Landing bonuses. Kerbin does not count. I said that. Yep. And on a successful mission, you receive 50% of the cost of your vehicle back. I originally did a few run-throughs at 100% uh, rate of return for successful missions on that, but uh, it also led to a runaway success. This is all, you know, I've tried to balance this as much as I can, but, um, you know, we'll see how it goes in progress, and if we need to make any changes, we can. Now, there are penalties. These penalties are crew death. Um, if you are trying to achieve a, achieve a circular orbit, there's a small penalty if you don't. And debris. The crew death is split into crash or asphyxiation. We will be using the ox the oxygen mod, so our crew can suffocate or asphyxiate, whichever it is. Crashing is 15,000, Kenny's penalty. Asphyxiation is 20,000. Um, extra 5,000 because it's kind of a slower death, I guess. Um, Non-circular orbit, 5,000. Land falling debris. What this means is, because there is, uh, there's no re-entry heat or anything, but any debris, above, any debris falling to the planet from above 80 kilometers, we could consider burning up. Anything below that is debris that has to fall in the ocean. If it hits land, that's a 10,000 penalty. Um, doesn't really count as debris falling onto the launch center. It's designed for debris anyway, unless it specifically hits the vehicle assembly building, space plane assembly building, or something like that. The launch pad itself is designed to take the brunt because, you know, we're going to be dropping SRBs on it all day. Um, that is the basics of it. The real meat and bones I'll put up. The initial budget is 50,000 kennies. That is what we have to start with. That's what got us, got to get us where we're going. Hopefully we don't fuck up. Uh, yeah, that sounds about it. Is we've got five crews, five crews in training. I think the first crew is um, led by uh, Captain Argus, Argus Apogee. Uh, yeah. yeah, he's going to be the flight commander for that. Uh, what else? Yeah. So, let's just uh, take a look at what we got. Parts-wise, I've not gone crazy too much. We've got Silisco Edition and Nova Punch. Uh, what else? I believe ah, we've got the cart mod for various little things. Ooh. Yeah, stuff like that. Um, we got Kerbal Engineer here. This is mainly so I can get um, the pr the uh, the prices for things a bit quicker. And uh, of course, the Oxygen mod, which has been extended. It's been all the values have been changed dramatically. I think this here was originally about 250 or something. I put it up to 3,000 because the original ones are ridiculous. Uh, supposedly. I've not tried it at all, but I kind of did some rough math, and this 72,000 capacity unit should, should be enough for a very, very thrifty moon mission of literally landing there and going, hey, this is a nice place, then running home really fast. Should. But we'll see entirely. There are... Uh, I don't ah I haven't uh I haven't actually done the numbers on this one. I might actually have to change this. But uh we've got this huge one here which will be mainly for space stations if we need it. This has 144,000 units. Solar panels, I have lowered the gain to 0 0.001. So to get anything good out of them you do need lots of them. So space station only. Um yeah. So that's the basics of this. I'm going to come back in episode one 
with the real meat and bones. We're going to see what we can do. Ah, yes, sorry. One more thing I forgot to mention. The avionics package here, the standard avionics package, I have taken the module for it and placed it within a Silisco Edition nose cone here, mainly because it looks way nicer on the front of... Um, I'll show you on the front of space shuttles because regularly you have to put this horrible nose on which looks ridiculous because this looks like a big old snoopy snout and it's really silly like that and it's all like her my derp derp but uh, oh what the hell is that okay but with this it's the same unit but look at that it's a bit better it's a bit more space shuttly okay that's my only my only sort of like customized part we do have mech jeb in here but that's literally only for the unmanned capsules such as the unoccupied guidance system the probodyne aeroshell and the two cores those are all unmanned units because uh, n normally they actually do come with crews in them but we've changed it so that they do no longer have crews in. So, yep, I'm going to come back in next episode, uh, the first episode, really, episode one. We are going to go for a suborbital rocket flight, see what money we can make, see whether we don't bankrupt ourselves horribly. Um, yeah, let's get this. Uh, let's get this rocket on the launch pad. Let's get this show on the road. Um, cool. I'm excited. I'm, you know, it's it's nice to finally get to sort of like test out this system. I've not actually played through any of this in game, so we'll see how it goes. Um, I shall catch you in the next episode. Bye.